In this presentation, I'm going to discuss one question on multidimensional arrays. So let's get started. Write a program that reads a 5 cross 5 array of integers and then prints the row sum and the column sum. That means I need to take all these integers in a 5 cross 5 array and then I need to print the row sum and the column sum of these individual rows and columns. Like for example, if I want to calculate the row sum of this row, then it comes out to be 9 plus 8 which is 17, 17 plus 3 is 20 and 20 plus 10 is 30. So row total will be 30 for this row. Similarly, if we want to calculate the column sum of this column, then it comes out to be 8 plus 2 which is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13, 13 plus 15 is 28 and 28 plus 6 is 34. So column total for this particular column will be 34. I would encourage you to pause the video for a while and try to answer this question on your own. I hope you're done. Okay, let's move on to the solution now. I'm initializing this array which is a 5 cross 5 array with all the integers which are given in the question. Okay. After this I require two variables i and j. Here i indicates row index and j indicates column index. This is required to traverse all the elements of this array. Apart from this I require a sum variable which will store the sum of each individual rows and columns. And I'm initializing this with value 0. I will tell you the reason why I'm initializing this with value 0. Okay. Now let's first calculate the row sum. And here is how we will calculate the row sum. If I want to traverse a two dimensional array, then I need two for loops, right? Where one for loop is nested within another for loop. Here I indicates row index and J indicates column index. The idea is to move the column index while the row index remains static. Then only we can calculate the row sum, right? So for this purpose, I'll take I over here and J over here. When I is zero, this will go from zero to four. That means it will traverse all the five columns. Inside this for loop, we can see we have one statement which says sum plus equals to aij, which means sum is equals to sum plus aij. i is the row index. When row is zero, column will be zero, one, two, three, and four. That means when row is zero, column will be zero, one, two, three, and four. So we can understand that we are simply accessing all the columns of this row and then we are adding them all together, right? Initially, sum needs to be zero because when we are taking this element, then it should not add to any other element. For this purpose, we will simply add this with zero and therefore the sum will not get affected and hence sum will contain value eight. After this, when second element came, then it will get added with eight and it will give the sum 11. And when third element came, it will get added with 11, which gives us 20, right? This way we will calculate the sum. And after completion of this for loop, we will simply print the sum on the screen, right? And then again, we will set this sum to zero because the previous sum which we have calculated is for this particular row. And the sum that we have calculated for this row should not affect the sum of the other row. That's why we need to set this sum to zero once again, right? After this, the i will get incremented. That means we will simply jump from this row to this row, right? And then again, the same process continues. This is the way we can calculate the row sum. Now, how we can calculate the column sum? The idea of the column sum is also very simple. Here, the difference lies in the for loop. As my initial assumption is, i indicates the row index and j indicates the column index. If I want to calculate the column sum, then I have to move my row index and not the column index. Previously, I make my row index static and move the column index, right? But here, I have to make my column index static and I have to move my row index. Therefore, your j needs to be static and i should move from 0 to 4. That is why I put j over here and i over here. When j is 0, i will go from 0 to 4. That means we will simply add all these elements which are there in this column. And similarly, we will add all the elements which are there in the other columns, right? And the rest of the process is same as what we have seen in the row sum. We'll print the sum and then we will reset sum to 0. Okay, now let me execute this code. In the explanation, I have considered the row sum and the column sum separately. But here in this code, I am combining them together. The row sum is there and the column sum is there. Let me execute this code now. 
Row total comes out to be 30, 27, 40, 36, 28 and column total will be 34, 37, 37, 32 and 21. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation.